Pokemon cards have exploded in price and popularity over the last couple years. And now in 2023, there are endless options of completely different packs to buy, all at different values and price points. So I wanted to go over and open up the top 10 best sets I think you should be purchasing in 2023. Going from the most affordable packs and sets to much more rare and expensive ones. Starting with Fusion Strike. So the general rule of thumb when buying Pokemon card packs, especially if you're trying to be price conscious, is that a good set of Pokemon cards is one that has a card inside that's more expensive than a booster box. So for example, if a booster box of Fusion Strike is $150, you want to make sure, dude, no freaking way, bro. You want to make sure that there's a card inside that's worth more than $200 or $140, $150. And that's big because this Pokemon right here, Gengar, comes out of Fusion Strike, and although this is not the alternate art version, it's a great pull, and there's other amazing pulls out of Fusion Strike. Now, the price of Elite Trainer Boxes for Fusion Strike are pretty much the same price as day one MSRP, uh, which is kind of hard to find, especially in older sets. Now, this isn't too old of a set, but it's definitely older. And the biggest hits from this set include the Gengar VMAX alternate art, ooh, Crabdomital V, which is going for around $200 ungraded right now, and at a PSA 10, over $430. So that, that alone makes this set really, really valuable. And again, that card is more valuable than a booster box of F Fusion Strike, which is a really good sign. The second biggest hit is the Espeon VMAX alternate art, which at a PSA 10 is $300. And ungraded, completely ungraded, that card's worth $124. And if history repeats itself, basically the expensive Pokemon and premium Pokemon like Espeon, like Gengar, as they get older, those cards typically end up going up in price especially for the more rare and more vintage versions of it. This set is only gonna get older, and again, assuming history repeats itself, those cards will only get more expensive, making the set more expensive. But for now, it's nice, it's affordable, and there's some amazing hits inside. Set number two, Silver Tempest. Now this set, Silver Tempest, is coming up on being almost a year old, actually. Isn't that insane? A year since Silver Tempest released. And the biggest hit in the set, which is the Lugia V alternate art, dipped down in price quite a bit actually over the last couple of months, but it's been steadily rising ever since. And the reason why it dipped so hard is because when the set first came out, I think Pokemon assumed that it would do really well and that people would really enjoy it. Also, it was kind of like during the Pokemon card boom. So they really overprinted the set, which means there was a lot of supply, a lot of Lugia, a lot of people opening it. People were much less excited about it. Regieleki. But again, that card is now back up in price, selling at over $150 ungraded and at a PSA 10. The cards were $330. Other amazing pulls in the set, the Lugia V-Star Jumbo card, I guess, if you have the collector's edition of that. And this has a Waifu, the Serena card inside, which at a PSA 10 sells for over, what, $150? So there's good pulls in here, and what this set does have is alternate arts, and it's got the Lugia V alternate art. And if you know anything about Lugia in the Pokemon card universe, it is typically one of the more expensive premium sought-after cards, with one of the most expensive cards in the world being a first edition Neo Genesis holographic Lugia, and that will always be a top pull out of the entire world of Pokemon. So, as long as Lugia is cool, Silver Tempest is cool. Next, Brilliant Stars, featuring Charizard. Pretty obvious this is a good set, right? Wrong, actually. The price of Brilliant Stars right now is around the price when it first came out, which is really surprising considering this set. In my opinion, I think Brilliant Stars is the most underrated set from the Sword and Shield era because it features the two biggest, most popular cards and Pokemon. Oh, ever printed. Dude, there's no way we just hit the Umbreon V, man. This is like a gallery alternate art card. And well, also too in this set, there's Umbreon inside. And right now, Umbreon is all the rage and it will continue to be a super popular Pokemon card moving forward. So any card with Umbreon on it is gonna be a little bit extra value because Umbreon is so valuable. That is incredible, we pulled that. <laughs> this set features Arceus and Charizard and it has alternate arts of both cards. It's got V-Stars, it's got gold cards. This set is stacked with a bunch of different types of rare cards of some of the most popular Pokemon in the entire franchise. And that Charizard V alternate art that you could pull from Brilliant Stars currently sits around $112 ungraded and at a PSA 10, around $300 which is a pretty decent price for a Charizard card at a PSA 10, but this is an amazing alternate art card. Charizard doesn't really have that many alternate arts, and this is one of the few that was printed in the Sword and Shield era. It actually might be the only one that was printed in the Sword and Shield era, which is kind of makes it a sort of iconic Charizard. And again, there's a lot more. There's Charizard V-Star Rainbow Rare, which is $157 at a PSA 10, which is really kind of cheap for a PSA 10 Charizard Rainbow Rare. Then we've got Marnie or Marnie's Pride Full Art Trainer Card, which is 
a waifu. That card's only $20 raw, $100 PSA 10. Charizard V Full Art, $85 PSA 10. Arceus V Alt Art, also $85. The big hits in this set, dude, we got the right V, bro. I thought this was the Charizard V Full Art, which by the way is a $85 card at a PSA 10. That's also pretty valuable. But we got the Full Art hit. It's a really fun set. It's got really awesome cards inside and it's still super affordable. Now we move to a fun one. It's Lost Origin, one of my favorites on the list today. I love Lost Origin because of the Pokemon cards that you can pull inside. It has one of my favorite alternate arts ever. If not, my I think this is my favorite alternate art ever from the Sword and Shield era, the alternate art Aerodactyl V, which I actually have two of that I'm getting graded right now. Really excited about that. And that card happens to be the number two most expensive card in the entire set, coming in at $100 ungraded and at a PSA 10, around $250 which is really great, especially for an awesome like Aerodactyl card, which is a Pokemon that really hasn't been like all that rare or crazy over the years. But it got a really cool card and that card is worth a lot. Also the most important and valuable card in this set is Giratina, a really, really cool legendary Pokemon that has historically been kind of one of the fan favorites of the franchise. And it shows in this set because it has gotten really, really expensive. This card, this Lugia card, ended up dipping down in price pretty heavy over the last couple of months, uh, but it, has jumped, completely jumped, and it's back. Everybody wants it again. The price of the Garatina V alternate art card is $310 ungraded, and at a PSA 10, Pidgeot V. It is a whopping $800. Yes, an $800 card coming out of Lost Origin, and on screen right now is the current price for a booster box of Lost Origin, which is 36 packs. And just the one Giratina V alternate art is worth more than that. So that is a really good sign for the set. Also, there's Radiant cards like this. You can pull Shinies. It's a really fun set, huge hits. Now we've got my favorite, Pokemon 151. Obviously this set is only released in Japan right now, but it's coming out in English in October of this year. And I'm gonna be buying probably over 10,000 packs and opening them up live, both on this YouTube channel and over on our Whatnot, where we're gonna live auction off packs of the brand new 151. If you wanna join our Whatnot auctions, link in the description, you get $15 free for signing up, check it out. This set is, I think, going to be the biggest set ever. <laughs> I am the biggest fan of Pokemon 151 and specifically the Japanese version, because in the Japanese version, you can pull God Packs. You cannot get those in English. They're only in Japanese. Nice, Wiggly Tough EX, beautiful. Also in this set, there's a concept called Master Ball Reverse Hollows, which means one in every 20 packs has the Reverse Hollow as a Master Ball. And there's really expensive cards that you can get with a Master Ball. Like, you know, like, oh! Nice, yeah, Zapdos EX. Like if you get a Mewtwo card with a Master Ball on it or a Pikachu, those are very valuable. And then other amazing cards in this set include the Erika's Invitation for uh, Alternate Art card, which is selling at $400 ungraded and at $2,000 at a PSA 10. Followed by the number two card being the Pikachu Master Ball at $353 ungraded and $1,800 at a PSA 10. We do get a Master Ball, yes! We got a Master Ball Trainer. Is this a more expensive one? No. The most expensive Master Balls are Pikachu and Gengar. Gengar being $500 at a PSA 10. And the hit, Raichu. This set is ridiculous. I'm gonna make a separate video talking all about it. This set is a reprint of the original 151 Generation 1 Pokemon, which everyone knows. And they'll probably like never do a set like this again because they already did it. There's alternate arts, there's full art EXs, there's really, really rare trainers, there's Master Ball cards, which you can get crazy unique combinations of. This set is jam packed with value. It has gotten very expensive, especially in Japan. Japanese, but when it comes out in English, I predict they're gonna print a lot of it, so it should be pretty affordable, but I think over time, this will be one of the best modern sets ever. Now we've got absolutely one of the best modern sets ever, and currently the most expensive Sword and Shield set, Evolving Skies. This set is currently going for like $400 for a booster box, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I think it's a little bit overhyped. Well, maybe not overhyped, but definitely overpriced right now. I do think, and I have always thought that Evolving Skies is by far the greatest Sword and Shield set ever, especially when it came out. 100% the best Sword and Shield set. So I think that it will always be valuable. It's always gonna hold value, not only because it's the best Sword and Shield set, but because of the cards that you can get from inside. They're insane. <sighs> Leafy on V. This set has some of the most popular Pokemon in the entire franchise, all stacked and just bundled into one set, including Rayquaza and a lot of the Eevee evolutions, like the number one card of Evolving Skies, the Umbreon. This set also has the single greatest collection of alternate art Pokemon cards that are in like one single set. It is just ridiculous the ones that you can pull. And the most expensive cards in this set, which is again, kind of what makes this so valuable and I think it's gonna make it valuable forever. Out of PSA 10, here are the prices for some of the biggest hits of Evolving Skies. Rayquaza VMAX alternate art at 500 
dollars. The Moonbrion Umbreon, I think the PSA 10, it's got to be over a thousand dollars for that. Actually, on screen right now is the price of a PSA 10 Moonbrion alternate art. Their Quasi V alternate art, I think, is around two hundred dollars. Dragonite V at around two hundred dollars. Sylveon V Max at around two fifty, and the Umbreon V alt art at around three hundred. <gasps> oh my God! And we pull the alternate art, dude. Let's go. <laughs> we got a Duraludon V alternate art from Evolving Skies. No shot out of a blister pack. That is ridiculous. Oh my, I don't know. On screen right now is obviously the value of this card. I don't know the price of it, but I know that it's an alternate art from Evolving Skies, and that is impossibly rare to pull with how expensive these packs are. I can't believe we just did that. Next is my favorite set, uh, favorite modern set ever printed. It's Hidden Fates, and I'll explain why I like this set so much. These packs are around $20 a pack, so we're definitely starting to get into the more expensive stuff, and this is Sun and Moon era, so the era before Sword and Shield and Evolving Skies. Hidden Fates has the single greatest shiny Pokemon card collection in one set ever. There are so many shiny Pokemon, which we'll hopefully pull today, Blaine's Last Stand, Lapras. Both just like in the regular shiny, kind of like Lucario and Garchomp, and then the full art shinies and the full art GXs, like the shiny Charizard GX, which is one of the best shiny Charizard cards ever made. It also has the shiny EV Evolution GX full art cards, and like we talked about with Evolving Skies, the EV Evolutions will always be valuable and always be sought after and always be something that people want. Plus, there's super duper popular full art shiny cards like Ho-Oh and Articuno and Mewtwo and Lucario. And I will say the prices for this set haven't really done much or jumped much over the last like kind of couple years. This set's really been flying under the radar. It's definitely, in my opinion, the most fun uh, set to open up from the modern era, especially if you're like hunting for rare, oh God, rare shiny things. We have a full art card. It's in the shiny slot. We could get something insane. Oh my God. Okay, dude, I'm so happy we pulled this though, especially for the video. The Nihiligo EX full art shiny. This definitely is, uh, you know, not the greatest pull that you can get from uh, Hidden Fates, but it just goes to show that there's so many different kinds of amazing full art shinies to pull from this set, making it one of the most fun sets, and in my opinion, the best set from the Sun and Moon era to open up. Okay, we're starting to get really expensive here. It's now the XY era, XY Roaring Skies. The booster box for this is around a little bit under $700, and the packs are actually under $20 a pack, which is pretty good, especially because this is XY era. These are really, really old, and this set is insane. It is filled with Rayquaza cards, which is one of the most popular Pokemon in the franchise with the most expensive cards in the entire franchise. The top hits in this set are Mega Rayquaza EX Full Art coming in at over $800 at a PSA 10. And there's Mega Rayquaza EX, the regular one, also I think around $700-ish for a PSA 10. Also, there's a really, really big waifu card to pull in here. I forget which, I think it's Winona. Um, I think that card is a couple hundred, oh, I just pulled the rare. It was Swellow. The rare with Swallow, Hydreigon and the Swallow. And the top hits at a PSA 10 coming out of this set, XY Roaring Skies, which, man, if you want to spend a little bit more on booster boxes and packs, I think this is a great set. The top hits include Rayquaza EX Full Art at $780, Mega Rayquaza EX Full Art at $750, Winona Full Art at $450, Cracked Ice Articuno at $400, and the Mega Rayquaza EX at $250. Last pack magic. No luck today from Roaring Skies. Know that it is an X and Y era set, so the hit rates are a little bit lower. Now we hit the expensive stuff. Starting with Black and White Dragons Exalted. This pack I purchased, I think on eBay, for somewhere around $100 for the one single pack. So these are not cheap, and there's a huge reason why. For starters, this is Black and White era, so it's older than, than Sun and Moon, it's older than EX. This is a really, really old era of Pokemon cards. And the biggest hits include Pokemon like Rayquaza, Ho-Oh, Giratina, Mew. There's really, really good cards to pull from this set. It also has a shiny Rayquaza card in it. There's actually four different shiny cards in here. There's Superior, Raniculous, Crocodile, and Rayquaza. All of them super duper expensive. And again, you can still pick packs up for around or under $100 each. Although the set is really only worth opening if you're planning on grading any of the hits that you get from it. And you kind of got to hope you get a pretty good hit because the prices for the set aren't super duper great. We've got the Alamomola, but if you do grade these cards and get them PSA 9 or 10, they're definitely expensive, definitely worth the 100. Today, we're not getting lucky. 
but it is a great set if you can afford it. And then set number 10 today is this guy right here, a very, very expensive pack of EX Dragon Frontiers. Now, this set is kind of as expensive as the original vintage stuff. I bought it for around $460. And honestly, I bought it from eBay, so it very well could be graded and I could be getting scammed. So be careful with that. If you wanna find a place to buy completely legit Pokemon card product, including vintage, mid vintage, anything, we sell and do box breaks on our whatnot. Again, link is in the description, gives you $15, really legit spot to buy legit cards. Okay, so here's why EX Dragon Frontiers, I'm marking it as one of the best sets to buy in 2023. For starters, this set has the cards Shiny Delta Charizard and Shiny Delta Mew. They are amazing, amazing Pokemon and insane pulls. It also has Latios and Latios cards inside, as you can see by the card art in front. And if you know anything about the Pokemon card market, you'll know that Latios and Latios have been absolutely erupting in price lately. I do not know the card trick. I, it's gotta be three, right? EX era, I don't know the card trick. I'm just gonna open up, okay. The set Team Up, which is another set I, I really think is worth buying, although it's very expensive right now, is going so crazy in price because of Latios and Latios, so it's making all the other Latios and Latios cards everywhere else get super duper expensive, including the ones in this set. You can still pick packs up of this set for under $500. Look at that, we got Totodile and Cyndaquil. We got the starters, beautiful. And there are huge hits in this set at a PSA 10, and I mean huge, which is why I think the set is so worth picking up over other vintage sets. The Dragonite EX at a PSA 10 comes in at $3,500. And look, these are like Delta, right? So this is like, it's like a fire Feebas. That's really cool. The Reverse Foil Typhlosion comes in at a PSA 10 at $800. The Shiny Mew at a PSA 10 from this pack is over $8,500. Dollars. God, I'm reading that right. That is ridiculous to even see. 8,500. Wait, I think I think this is a foil. Is this a foil? Look at this. It's reflective. Did we? Did I get a hit? The Rayquaza EX Holographic at $1,200 at a PSA 10. We've got the Scramble Energy. And the most expensive card in this set, which is an insane price card, is the Gold Star Charizard. Again, the shiny Gold Star Delta Charizard coming in at a PSA 10 at $22,000. This set is ridiculous. And yes, I do think actually this trainer card, which was a holographic, was our rare. So I'm sure this pack was weighed and we didn't get anything good from it for that reason. But those are the top 10 best sets I think you should be buying in 2023. If you enjoyed the video and you found this entertaining and helpful, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.